Hello and welcome. My name is Marion and I have Marion Creates, which you can find online at Facebook, Instagram, and www.marioncreates.com. I would like to thank you for joining me and I am going to show you how to use decorative borders. This is a stamp set that is in the new January through April mini catalog by Stampin' Up. I love this set for the versatility of all of these different stamps. So this is my favorite with the corner. I love being able to uh, border or frame uh, different sentiments with this one. And I love these little teeny tiny pieces also for um, different things. But they're all really beautiful and I'm going to feature this one right here today. I am pairing decorative borders with go to greetings. I love this set because even though it only has four sentiments happy birthday, thinking of you, just a note, and thank you, it comes in three different fonts. So, depending on the size of your space that you'll be stamping or um, just your mood you have lots of options to choose from i absolutely personally love this one is my favorite i mean what am i thinking I, i'm what am i saying i love them all so um we are going to be using this one uh the just a note but the happy birthday thinking of you thank you those all work really well so here is a peek at the card got a little bit of shine there don't know why um, and also featuring perfectly penciled designer series paper by Stampin' Up. But don't you think that just a note fits perfectly with this uh, stamp from Decorative Borders? And then here's the inside. And to get that coloring, I use the watercolor pencils. Here's the envelope. Here's the one side, the front, and then the back. I just haven't colored the back yet but you could leave it plain and it's still just as beautiful so for this card you are going to need two pieces of uh, one inch by four inch of the perfectly penciled designer series paper from Stampin' Up. I love this particular pattern in that packet because uh, the flowers are small enough and bunched together close enough so that um, even when you have a one inch piece, you still have a lot of design on there. You will also need a four by four inch of basic white cardstock and a piece of four by five and a quarter inch piece of white cardstock. You will also need a piece of eight and a half by five and a half inch uh, piece of basic black cardstock and you're going to score it at four and a quarter inches in the landscape position. Now the difference between landscape and portrait is just the same as when you're printing a document on your printer. So the first thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to stamp my border and I'm using stays on black stays on because I'm going to be using the watercolor pencils and what I do to help myself remember what uh, inks work best for um, watercoloring or the alcohol markers or even just the regular markers is I'll actually write it on the back of the ink pad to remind me. And the blends are these markers that have the clear liquid in it that are good for watercoloring or using to pick up color from your uh, chalks, your uh, pastels from Stampin' Up. So we have here our stamped image and um, the watercolor pencils that I use, the colors I use were Melon Mambo, uh, Flirty Flamingo, Pumpkin Pie, Daffodil Delight, Garden Green, and Granny Apple Green. Now why, um, so when I do, why do I have a little bit of yellow? Because I think yellow in a painting or a piece of art um, is, uh, it brings out all the other colors. It's kind of like the salt in the cookie uh, dough recipe. 
in that um, it just kind of brings out the other flavors. The same is true for the, um, the yellow in when you're coloring. So I'm going to start with the Melon Mambo. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find kind of where I think the shade, where the shade is going to be, where there's not going to be much light. Um, and that part of the flower is going to be a little bit darker. Don't fret if your lines aren't exactly straight. It's not it's going to be fine. I promise you it will be fine. And just like in nature, all flowers are different. So um, it's okay if your flowers turn out differently than mine. They should because there's, there's hardly ever two flowers exactly the same. And so I'm just going through and coloring these just not being terribly careful because it doesn't really matter. If your tip gets to be a little flat as this one is, you can get a pencil sharpener. And I usually have one on my desk, but it doesn't look like I do. Besides, I don't have enough time to show you uh, or to spend on sharpening a pencil while you're waiting while I'm doing this. So then I'm going to bring in, and I would do that not only to the 4x4 four four inch, but I would also do it with the um, interior uh, piece also. Sorry about that. You're going to color, you'll stamp on your 4 and a quarter by, or your 4 inch by 5 and a quarter. You'll stamp the borders there, and this is actually the direction of the card. See, there's a just a note. You can see how this way it's this direction because we're going to put that just a note in there. And on the inside, it's the other direction. Um, personal preference, that's the way I wanted to do it. It doesn't mean that that's the way you have to do it. Um, on your designer series paper, uh, you would do the same thing. You'd find the darker areas. And with the designer series paper, it's a little bit easier because... It kind of is already showing you where the darker areas will be with the extra shading there. So you're just going to go through and you're going to do that with your flowers. And then you'll come back in with the flirty flamingo and go ahead and color that in like that. And you'll do that on both of your pieces like that. And then on the part that you stamped, you're going to do the same thing. And it's okay if you go over, in fact, it's encouraged to color over top of the darker Melon Mambo. Because um, it kind of, I think, it moves the color around. I could be wrong, um, but I think it also colors in some of the extra white areas. Um, I just, I like it. I don't know if there's a scientific reason behind it other than I just like it. Or if it really is doing something. I don't know. And so now for the leaves, I'm going to go in here with the darker color, the garden green. And again, doing the same thing where I'm thinking about where the sun is not shining. I'm also going to kind of bring in some color next to the stems because if you put it on the stems, you probably won't see it as much. And we're going to do that, coming through, doing all those. And of course, you would do it to the other side also. So any of your flowers that you have, your greenery, any of that, you're just going to Come in here like so. And you would do the same thing with your designer series paper too. You'll just come in here, find the, the dark areas, and go ahead and put that in there. Give everything just a little bit of a touch of that garden green so you can get some of that shading. And now we're going to switch to the granny apple green. And so now with the granny apple green, I'm just going to go ahead and on the leaves, go ahead and 
color right over the garden green like that come back over here and of course you'd color the whole thing come over here we're going to see how beautiful that shows up it's a little bit oh, you can't really see it. it's a little bit shiny there let me see if this will turn work out um, Let's see here, like this, because that granny apple green has just enough yellow in it that it brings out that garden green, in my opinion. So we're just going to keep going like that, and I'm not going to color both sides. And then the pumpkin pie. I'm just going to add a little of that there and then I'm going to take the daffodil delight and do that and then over here I'm going to add a little bit of the pumpkin pie and then some yellow like that so you can kind of get an idea there's a little bit of that and if that um, the lines are a little too harsh you can come in and add some more of that flirty flamingo to kind of knock it down. And if it's still too harsh, you could bring in your water painter and just kind of move that color around a little bit to kind of soften it like that. Like that. Now another technique that you can do with this is um, you can leave it like it is. Let me bring this up so you can kind of see it a little bit better. You can leave it like it is. You could bring your water painter and just kind of soften your lines a little bit. Or if you wanted to, you could give your uh, stamped images a little bit of a glow by just coming in and coloring outside the lines. That's right. I am giving you permission to color outside the lines. And what that does is it just kind of gives you a little bit of a glow effect. It kind of softens the image a little bit. Um, it just makes it kind of fun. I actually think I like this technique the best, but that's just me. You do not have to do that if your um, tendencies do not allow you to do that I give you permission to not do that and leave it the same as it was okay now that we have that uh, colored let's go ahead and add our just a note to this and let's see how well I do doing this on looking through the camera instead of through the other it's a little over further than I'd like it, but you know what? Nobody's going to even know. And honestly, I could actually add an embellishment over there on the left. And people would think I meant to do it that way. So I've got that colored. I've got my just a note on there. I have colored my in stamped and colored my inside piece. And here are my two pieces of designer series paper already colored and ready to go. So let's go ahead and start putting our card together. And I think I forgot the dimensionals. Of course I did, but you know what? That's okay because I will now show you what it looks like either way. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this Tombow Mono Multi. And remember, a little bit goes a long way. The more you put on, though, the more uh, flexibility and time you have to get it positioned just right. Like, that's a lot of glue, but that's okay. So I'm going to put it over here on the side, just kind of eyeballing to make sure that the black border is pretty even all the way around. And I'm going to put my glasses back on because... Up until recently, I didn't need them, but I've come to terms with it is time to start using the reading glasses. 
And even though I'm not reading, it still makes it easier to see. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one on this side. Like that. And we're going to go ahead and put some adhesive. You can see here, I, I use the back side too. So this is, this is adding that glow effect. But we're going to go ahead and glue that side down. So there's two sides to every piece of cardstock and need to make sure I get this on just right because how many times I don't know about you but I have put it on upside down a couple of times now the one thing that I'm noticing by not using the dimensionals this time is I have a little bit of an overhang right here um, and actually, did I use enough glue? I may have used enough glue that I could move that. If you use enough glue and there's still some flexibility, you could scooch that up and scooch that down. Um, but I think it's fine. So this is what it looks like um, without the dimensionals. Um, it's just a flat, flat card. Nothing wrong with that at all it's still pretty this is with whoops this is with the dimensionals I know I gave you a little peek now you're gonna be like wait bring that back I promise you I will bring that back so let's go ahead and get some adhesive on our inside piece and get that positioned on here Again, enough adhesive to just give it a little bit of wiggle room. So there's the inside. So that's that's the card I just did. Okay, so now I will bring back the other piece. So remember the glow technique that I did where we just I used the water painter and just kind of went around the flowers and the leaves. That's what that looks like. And then I added some of those um, butterflies on there and you can see this one actually has the happy birthday instead of the just a note I did the same thing for the um, designer series paper where I colored it and then used the water painter to just kind of give it a little bit of a glow around the flowers and the leaves isn't that pretty oh, I love that it's so pretty and there's the inside again using that glow technique where you're just not coloring inside the lines. I give you permission to color outside your outside the lines. And a reminder of what the envelope looks like. That's the outside and the front. And that's the flap. Again, I didn't color the flap, but you could color the flap. It just it was a time thing more than a preference thing. I actually probably will go back and color that later. So thank you so very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope that I see some of your cards using these stamp sets in the future. Thank you and have a great day.